Hello, my outstanding friends. Roger Spur giving you a tour. And originally, I was going to do opals, which I am going to do. And I have them all laid out here, and I'm getting ready to do them. I have a bunch of different types of opals. I'm going to go through the chemistry and how they form and all that, because they're not understood well at all. However, just as I'm getting ready to start, my friend Tyson from Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures sends me a video of this and says, what do you think? So being easily distracted, <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to have to do this. You know, I, I, this happens to me all the time. I'm right in the middle of something. Somebody sends me something and I just go off on a, on a tour. You know, I can't help myself. This is, I guess I'm scatterbrained. That's why a lot of times my videos are a little choppy here and there, as you probably noticed. Now, so I start looking at this, and I think I got it understood. So I'm going to just lay it out to you. Not a big, long thing about it. But it's, in my opinion, I'm 100% I'm sure this is biology. And I'm going to show you some of my specimens that, that I, I think sort of indicate that I'm correct, you make your own determination. All right, so get ready, because here it comes. We're going to be talking about this. This is in Canada. Now, did I mention the, the, the guy? Seems like a nice guy. Uh, you know, from, from what he's written about, you know, he went up there, he stayed with the people, they helped him, they did all kinds of nice things for him. People are starting to understand. We're, we're just, you know, when people say, oh, that's just nothing, that just... Ah, oh, it's just nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You don't know until you look. So, that's what I do, and that is apparently what he does. And it's called Wandering Wolf. All right, Wandering Wolf. And um, apparently he goes around looking for different anomalies or, or whatever. I'm not exactly sure. This is the first time I've run across him, but... He's got a drone, and uh, have drone, will travel, you know. <laughs> All right, so my friend Tyson from Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures sends me this video to say, take a look, what do you think? Well, I watched, basically it's, it's the same small formation from all kinds of different angles and so forth. And this, I think, is a pretty good shot to make my claim. Now, this is up on a crest of a sloping hill, one's going this way and one's going this way. So, it's coming up to here. So, I would say this is the surface of some creature's body. And I, I well, I, let me put it this way. There's no question whatsoever. This is some kind of biological membrane-ish tissues. Now, <laughs> Normally, you would see that in the body tissues. However, a snakish thing might might have to have these things moving back and forth if they want to jiggle around like a snake does, because this this would be this would give you a structural fabric coating the snake, but they'd be able to jiggle and do all the things like a snake would do. Now. How the scales would be on here, I don't know. If there was scales, I don't know. Was it just fleshy? Was it feathery? I have no idea. But I'm, as far as I'm telling you right now, I can see this is no question in my mind, absolutely 100% certainty. This was biological. And it appears that it was the crest of whatever this creature was. And whatever part of this creature it was. If it was a dragon, if it was a snake, I don't know what it was. Now, let's take the perspective from coming down across here. Now, let me turn off the sound. It's, it's, all it is really basically is music and showing this shot from a lot of different perspectives, which is good. It, it's, uh, it's good to see this and understand it. Now, he's zooming in on here. Let me turn this off. Now, whoops, this one here too. Now, you can see all these blocks. Let's stop it here and there. You see all these blocks right here? They're basically a layer. Now, I, if I was right up close to it, and I could put some water on it and look at it and so forth, I could tell you 
you see the biology. You can actually see the, the redness in some of them, and you see the blackness in others. And because there's going to be some amount of blood that services literally every tissue in your body. Now, let's look at look at the look at this now. You see that how how many little layering things there is here? These that's that's indicative of some kind of a scaly thing. I've I've seen them. They have a ton of layers. Uh, now. Now we're coming up over the crest. Right, and this is where all those little, the pieces that we see coming up this way. But you see, it continues on. Now, did somebody remove all these blocks from here and do something with them? I have no idea. But they appear to stop abruptly. Now, that's also something possible. It is an abrupt transition leading to some kind of muscle. Let me show you something. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's exactly what it might be. It could be an emplacement, all right? So this would be an emplacement. And I'll show you one that I think might have a similarity to this. So up here, we have the emplacement and it locks it in here. And then coming out of here, we have fibers that allow it to flex and do all these kind of things. And then abruptly, at the very end where we saw, it transitions into muscle. And that is what happens. There is abrupt transitions. And I mean they're abrupt sometimes. So this is coming out. And you got a little bit of flexibility in here because that's what a tendon does. It has to be flexible. And then at the very end, and actually, I'm seeing some of these holes here, which is indicative of what happens between the end of a tendon and, and the muscles. You, you do get more of these, I think. And here it is, zip, just stops, just, just, just like broken like nothing. Now, down here, I can see like some little, little bits and rocks that, are, that could be something to do with tendon balls but you can see it's just abruptly transitioned now I can show you a couple things that sort of support what I'm saying and um, and again this is on a big rise going both sides and it looked like to me it's like the back of something but I you know this is very speculative I have no idea and it could be as I say a tendon of some sort it's a little different than I normally see tendons normally you see them coming straight out in fibers like this way but I've also seen them like this, and I'll show you one. As a matter of fact, I, I, I have one. It's not, it's not exactly like that, but it's got some similarities. All right, so don't forget, this is Wandering Wolf. That's the channel, Wandering Wolf. And this is Mystery Rocks of Saskatchewan Drone Video, Canada. Now, you see that abrupt transition? For me, that's pretty conclusive that this was attached to some muscle and the muscle has eroded away primarily is gone and that's what exactly what happens to muscle and i'll show you one that is a similar situation but it was a different type of anchor and here it comes right now all right you see this these little straps are basically what you saw there, but th 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 where you saw them there, they were much bigger, and they had eroded the what they call the slurpy, the leucine-rich, small leucine-rich proteins in between the fibers. And I can show you those. You see these right here? Those are all eroded away from from those blocks that were out in that field, and the blocks are just laying around, basically in a sort of a, a pattern just like these would be if all that stuff eroded away from it and it was bigger these are not big enough to give you that big of a pattern but you can see it's pretty obvious what's going on now this particular one is a splayed type of tendon this right up here was the anchor right in this area the whole ball right there snapped into something that locked it in now what that does for you is a tendon is just a little rubber band and it just goes just about like that. That's about it. 
It doesn't go like this. It just goes, mm, mm, mm. Now, it, as it comes out, it gets more and more fleshy and less and less mineralized. This is virtually completely mineralized connective tissue. This is a little less, and then out here it just breaks off because you got the fleshy muscle is, is really floppy. But this stuff is not. Totally different situation. Totally different. That's why you see these blocks of tendon, but you don't see the muscle much. Muscle turned into mud. It literally turned into mud and clay. But the stuff underneath, where the membranes coated all the tendons and organs and all that, those things preserve very, very well. Um, but the rest eroded away and turned into mud. When I talk about abrupt transitions, I'm talking about abrupt. You see that? And it doesn't get any more abrupt than that. Now, same with this. Can you see that? That's selenite. You see right through there? That's as flat as it can be, right across there. That is an abrupt transition. And this colored gooey stuff is literally the glue that glued these pieces together. Just like that's the glue that glued this into, into which would, over here would have been where the bone was, I'm sure. You know, this is as abrupt as it gets. And so is this. But that's just the way it worked. Now this turned into selenite because it was in a different chemistry condition. There was different pH, different temperature, different length of soaking. This one had a lot of transition metals because you have a lot of colors. And that's this one doesn't. It doesn't have any. There was all, it washed all the all the transition metals out. The last bits are the rusty little colors here. Almost you know, everything. Almost everything has this little rusty color to it if it completely washes out. Even like this here. This would be considered a rough opal. And that's that's the transition metals. There's, there was still blood in here. You know, it's a water opal. Most of my stuff are water opals that I have here from my property. Now I have a whole bunch of them that came from Australia. And I, I got to be honest with you, somebody, some very nice person sent them to me a few years ago. And I, I, I can't find the, the person's name that sent them to me. And I haven't really had much of a chance to look at them, but there's some fabulous little, they're little scrap pieces. There's a fire opal. I got some black opal, the rarest of all black opal. I, 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 this one here is fabulous looking. I mean, I got a whole bunch of them here that we're going to look at in a microscope. Some very cool looking stuff. And the silicon invasion, which is the, in, the silicon invaded. All, well, we're going to get deep into all of this stuff. No sense in taking a little bit and piece at a time. All right, so we're going to have a lot of stuff to look through here. And we'll be looking at it in the microscope and try to understand what we're seeing. And Okay, my friends, so like I said, I was going to do the opals, and I am going to do them. And that's an opal that's called a Yoa Nut Opal. And I have another one here in the microscope. I have a whole batch of different opals here that we're going to be looking at in a minute. Um, and trying to understand what we're looking at because I'm going to tell you right now it's all biology. Opals are not just rocks. They form from biology and that my friends is a heart. That is a heart. And you want to see something else? This right here is an eyeball. You see that? That's the strap of the eyeball that lets you turn Opal is is primarily made of transition metals. We're going to get into this. It's going to be a very detailed explanation of how opals form from silicates and where the silicates come from, what silicates are made of, and why are they so ubiquitous? Why are they everywhere in the world? And how do, how do they form this ooze in the ocean? And I mean, it's just all kinds of... This gets very, 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 very deep. And... Um, it could take a little while to do it, but it needs to be done to explain how these opals form. Like that's an eyeball. And it's, it, all of them are biology. They're all biology. This is a, this is a clam. 
That's a crown. And, uh, and I understand why you see all these different colors. Uh, and I have so much on this. I have all of the, even the microscopy of the formation of these little beads of colors. And uh, anyway, this, this will get kind of deep, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> all right, I love you all. We'll talk later.